In this example, our counterparty has the choice of settlement. Therefore, remember, when we recognize transactions in terms of RFRS2, we need to look at this transaction from our entity's point of view, and our entity does not have an unconditional right to avoid paying cash. Our entity does not know which option the employee will choose. Therefore, we need to recognize a compound instrument. Our debt component will be accounted for as cash settled and equity component as equity settled. Now let's read the information provided. On 1 January 20.11, Comp Limited grants an employee the right to choose either. Now this is your clue guys. The employee has the right to choose either 800 phantom shares, the right to a cash payment equal to the value of 800 shares, option 1, or 900 actual shares, option 2. Now remember, the cash portion we will recognize as cash settled debt component and the actual shares as the equity component. The grant is conditional upon completion of two years service. If the employee chooses the actual share alternative, equity settled, the shares must be held for two years after vesting date. Then on 1 January 20.11, Comp Limited's share price is 20 Rand per share. This share price amounts to 22 Rand and 23 Rand at the end of 20.11 and 20.12. The fair value of the shares to be issued to the employee, however, amounts to only 19 Rand on 1 January 20.11. Now remember guys, this is a transaction with the employee, therefore our measurement date and grant date will be the same date, and this is the date when they enter into the agreement. We now need to identify that we need to recognize a compound instrument. Now, where do we start? Our first step, we need to determine the fair value of our debt component. Now, remember, the debt component will be our cash settled. And when we calculate our cash settled, we need to measure this at fair value at the end of each year. Okay? Now guys, when you look at this, they've indicated to us on 1 January 20.11, the share price is 20 Rand per share. If guys, do you agree with me that if they had to pay out the cash payment equal to the value of our shares, that this value be the 20 Rand. Okay, therefore we will have to use our 800 shares times 20 Rand, which is the value that they will have to pay out on that date. Then step two, we need to determine the fair value of our equity component by reference to the fair value of the equity and cash alternatives. Remember, when we look at our equity component, we need to use our fair value at grant date. Now, guys, important. We have first calculated our fair value of our cash component, step one. Now we need to determine the fair value of our equity component. How do we do this? Remember, they've indicated to us that the employee can choose either the value, cash value of 800 shares or number two, 900 actual shares. Therefore, this will be the 900 times 19 Rand, which is our fair value at grant date. Okay? Now, what you need to be able to identify is when you compare this, the Fair value of our cash component is 16,000 and the fair value of our equity component is the 17,100. We need to recognize 
the difference and I want you to please add this is your step three you will have to recognize the difference which is 1100 as equity share based payment reserve now guys if you think about this we are recognizing a liability and this liability exceeds the equity value that we recognize we only recognize equity to the value of 1100 without thinking about our vesting guys remember okay so we are actually being very conservative from a finance point of view to rather recognize a liability compared to equity okay now when you recognize your transaction at the end of december 20.13 you will identify that there will be a line item for your cash settled liability as well as a line item for your share based payment reserve in your equity and when you look at the cash settled now important guys this will be the 800 shares times fair value at the end of the year and remember the vesting condition being 1 over 2. Then guys, similar to our share based payment reserve vesting condition divided by 2, 1 over 2 guys and we only use the 1100 as per our step Three. Then for the next year, we need to recognize our cash settled and important at fair value at the end of the year. And we need to remember to recognize our share based payment reserve. Now, they indicate to us option one if the employee chooses cash settlement on 31 December 20.12 we need to recognize the following journal entry but before we do this I want you to please have a look at the theory block on your left hand side at the top we have indicated at settlement date remember we've recognized our compound instrument the liability should be remeasured to fair value and reduced to zero if paid okay now guys if you look at the total of our liability at the end of 20.12 which is our cash settled share base liability the amount is 18,400 we have already recognized or revalued this at fair value in our previous journal okay and we then need to credit our bank with the 18,400 then they indicate to us or reclassify to equity if shares are issued now guys no shares are issued important they indicate to us that the amount recognized in equity will remain in equity yes but what i want you to be able to identify the amount that you have recognized as a share based payment reserve should now be transferred to your retained earnings remember your retained earnings is part of your equity presentation as well and this is important and i want you to please ensure that you know this but let's just quickly think about this one guys we cannot have a share based payment reserve in our statement of changes in equity that relates to a transaction that has already ended meaning the fact that our counterparty chose the cash okay now option number two if our counterparty decides to take shares we will have to debit our cash settled share based liability with the 18,400 we will have to take out our share based payment reserve 1,100 and we will credit share capital to the value of 19,500. Okay, guys, the total value. 